Eric Burgess here. A package contains 12 capacitors, four of which are defective. If four are selected, find the probability of getting, and then we have zero defective capacitors, one defective, and three. And this actually really is something you could run into. Uh, you definitely want to measure your components before you use them. Something I learned the hard way on more than one occasion. So let's see here, zero defective capacitors. Well, okay, we've got 12 of them in total. Four of them are defective. In this case, we don't get any, and we're picking four of them. So that means that our sample space, right, the bottom number is always going to be 12 choose four. Now it's not permutate four because we assume that all these capacitors are similar. So as, if, as long as we wind up with a defective one, that would be a problem. So, uh, and it kind of helps to write it out. So let's say that uh, working is W and defective is D. Well, let's draw out a scenario and ask, does this uh, change anything? So let's say you get working, 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 defective. Let's say you get defective, working, working, working. So are these different in any way? Does the order matter? Well, no, because all we're concerned about is the total number of defective capacitors that we're getting. So in this case, it doesn't matter, which is why we can tell that it should be a C and not a P for permutation down there in the bottom. So this is our sample space and there's no given that's or anything. So this is going to be the sample space for A, B and C. And then they want to know, you know, zero defective caps. So that means that of the 12, the 12 capacitors we choose, remember this is our condition, the top. Uh, let's write this over here because this is where people start to lose track of what a probability is because they get lost with these combinations. It's a condition over a sample set or a sample space, I should say. So sample space, all the possibilities live there. And a condition is only the conditions we're concerned with. In this case, uh, the sample space is all the ways we can pick four capacitors. And the condition is given by ABC, in this case, zero defective capacitors. So we would have 12 capacitors and we want to pick defective ones. So actually, there's only four defective capacitors. So there's four defective capacitors. We choose none of them out of the... 12 defective capacitors. So if there's 12, four defective and we choose none, that means that the other eight, we'd have to choose four of the working capacitors, right? So this one is the, this is, we don't pick any defective and we pick all working. And there's 12 total. That's why this one's eight, because eight plus four is 12. So when we do this, we're gonna get an answer out. So there's a bunch of ways to type this in the calculator. I'm gonna use uh, the fraction key. So I'm gonna hit the green key, F1 type of fraction. Again, that's alpha and then F1, this like little button up here. And then we're gonna put these in parentheses. So we got a four and then we have a combination. So we're gonna go to math, probability, combination is number three. So you see combination, hold the phone. I don't recall seeing an R there before. Oh, well, that's fine. Okay, guess they. I guess I just never noticed. So we've got a combination, and then we have the number zero. And then we can close parentheses and open a new one because it's multiplied, remember? Then we have eight, and then we go to math, probability, combination, number three. And then we choose a four. And then on the bottom, we've got a 12 math probability, combination, number four, right, this is sample space. So we hit enter and we get out a fraction. Don't panic, you can go to math to fraction. We wanna to go to decimal, we don't want a fraction, to decimal. And we hit enter, so it's gonna take the answer, which is the last thing we had. And so this is the result that we get. We get 0.14, and we'll just go ahead and round, 141. So this, is the chance of getting no defective capacitors. So this is part A, let's do B. So B we know has the same basic bottom shape, 12 choose four. And now that we've got our template, you know we just have one defective capacitor this time. 
it's going to be four choose one right because we have a defective one and then we have eight choose and this time we only get to pick three working ones right because we're picking four total three plus one is four and eight plus four is twelve which is all the capacitors so when we do this one well let's see what we get so neat thing about this calculator you can go up and instead of retyping it you can actually just hit enter after you've highlighted it and boom it puts it there for you so all we need to do is adjust the number four to be a three and the number zero to be a one you hit enter and again we get a fraction don't panic just go to a decimal and we get 0.453 and technically these are approximately if you want to be really honest about what you're doing <laughs> and then we've got a c which is three defective capacitors so okay we put that down we already know this is our sample space. There's 12 caps total. We're picking four of them. And then we've got three defective ones. So that's four, choose, and then three. So notice that the chance of picking one is pretty high because, you know, there's four of them. Getting one of them, you know, is a pretty good chance of getting that. Let's see how it fares with three. And then we have eight, choose, and we're choosing uh, one working one this time because three of them are defective. And we already know it's going to be approximate. So we come up, we highlight it, and we hit enter to copy it. We come in here and we put a 1 where the 3 is, right? 8 choose 3. And we put a 3 where the 1 is. We hit enter. We get a fraction. We say, okay, well, we'll convert that to a decimal. You could also just do the division. You don't have to do it this way. You could divide, right? Uh, I'll show you how in just a sec. And so you get this, or you could have typed, you know, 32 divided by 495 and it will give you the same thing so you don't have to use this kind of actually you know maybe that's a little extra maybe just is an easier way to just think about it so we get 0 0.065 this is a lot lower right because the chance of getting three of them just intuitively i'm not saying that it's always going to be intuitive but I mean, come on, you get that many capacitors, you know, there's a reason we think it's kind of weird and that math uh, sort of backs up our intuition in this particular case. So that is how you do this kind of question. So if you ever want to check, uh, this is how you do it. You would just split it up into the ones that are defective and not working and use the sample space on the bottom. If you have any questions about this, feel free to drop a comment, subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and we'll catch you in the next problem.